Oh. Got it. My meeting is being live stream. So uh, welcome to the first uh, text and context of the 22-23 season, 2022-2023 season. And um, the coming year, we celebrate uh, the 75th anniversary of the founding of the State of Israel. So many of our sessions will focus on songs and texts uh, from State of Israel and uh, songs in particular that that are seminal, I think, and important and that uh, Kol Nashim is singing this season. And so we're going to start with uh, Lu Yehi. And I'm going to make sure that I can share sound. And I did send uh, the link, but I'm going to play uh, this recording for you uh, before I give you some background on how and when this recording uh, started. So here is Naomi Shemer on, mm -hmm. on Israel television. And please uh, mute yourselves. And here she is. Uh, this is the very, very first time that Lou Yehi was heard in Israel. <laughs> Please, please mute yourselves. Uh, here we go. Sorry about that. So 
So let's uh, stop the share. And so I'm sure, uh, I assume everybody has heard, at least heard this song before. And you notice that there were five verses. It's almost never uh, sung with five verses. And, and we'll talk about that. And if you've heard the song before, I'm sure you noticed that this is not the chorus that we are accustomed to singing, uh, right? She, we sing, And so uh, in, in searching for material, and I'm going to share my screen with you now, even though I'm going to read some things, but this way you can, I don't know about you, but I like seeing things. And so uh, in the uh, Israel National Library, you can find a quote from Naomi Shemer. And uh, what does she say? She says, I'm reading from here. In the summer of 73, the Beatles' Let It Be was played a lot on the radio. I liked the song, but I didn't like the Hebrew name we gave it, Shehiyeh. May it be. In my heart, I called it Lu Yehi, and I planned to prepare a Hebrew version with this name. That summer, my friend Chava Alberstein asked me to write a new song for her. I told her about my plans for Let It Be, and we both forgot about it. In the days between Kippur and Sukkot, Chava called me and reminded me of that conversation. She said it was urgent. I have a performance for the pilot's wives. Let's do it. Which, P.S., as an aside, my own uh, connection, my husband was a pilot uh, at the time in the Israeli Air Force, uh, and he was a POW in Egypt from 1970. He was released after the war. So it's highly likely that his wife and the wives of the other POWs were at this concert. Chava came to my house, and the Hebrew version I prepared for her no longer had anything to do with the original, but rather included the worries and anxieties of the war, which had broken out a day or two before. While we're next to my piano singing the new song I had written still to the tune of Let It Be, my husband, Mordechai Horowitz, came home, having been released from the reserve for the moment, from reserve duty for a moment. He heard the new song and said, I won't let you waste this song on a foreign tune. This is a Jewish war and make it a Jewish tune. After a while, Aharon Adin called and asked me to appear on Israel television that evening. What, listen to this. On the way to Herzliya Studios in Aharona's car, I changed the tune. And like the words, the new melody already had the size and anguish of the war. It turns out that the Beatles song was in a sense a springboard or a scaffolding for a completely new song. The next day, Erev Sukkot, the new song performed by me, was broadcast on TV. I was in Pardes Chana with my friend Batya Strauss. The next morning, I got a call from the Gashashim, a well-known Israeli entertainment group. A car brought me to IDF studio, radio studio. Zico, who is the Isra a very well-known Israeli orchestra director, wrote an arrangement, and I recorded the song with the Gashashim. I gave the new score to Chava, and two days later, she also sang Lu Yehi on TV television in its new format. So this melody, which we consider most one of the most iconic uh, in, in the post uh, Yom Kippur uh, music songbook uh, was composed on the way to the station. Another thing that you might find of interest that I found, and don't worry, we're going to go through all of this in the National Archives. And so here is her handwritten uh, text. And over here, right here, scratched out, it says in Hebrew, Leshir HaBittles, to the Beatles song, and Girsa uh, Ivrit, um, the Hebrew version, No Mishemer, and she scratches that out and writes, Milim Velachan, No Mishemer. And the first verse, you can see she's got a few scribbles, but basically it stays the same. Me'asif is changed a little bit. And if you look here, that little bite katan is was something that she that she added afterwards you know it was added it was added in so very interesting and let's look before we go any more in depth uh let's take a look at all of the verses so odiesh mifras lavan ba'ofek mul anan shachor kaved kol shenevakesh lo yehi and I'm going to skip the repetition. So there's still a white sail on the horizon in front of a heavy black cloud. And if in the evening windows, the holiday candlelight is shaking or 
uh, a shivering, whatever we ask, let it be, lu yehi. And so um, it, it occurs to me that before we keep going on these verses, let me throw out to you, what did you think when you heard, and, and you're going to unmute yourself or raise your hand if you have uh, something that you want to say. I think I have you all on one page. What do you think let it be meant when you first heard let it be? Was it leave it alone or I hope it will happen? Or something else. Barb, what's I saw the, what's you. the second yeah. line? I Say again, Barb. I hope, I hope it will happen. I hope it. I hope it will continue. That the lights will continue. That you'll see, still see that white sail on the horizon. With the, on the horizon. Uh, uh, no, no, no. I'm talking about the Beatles. Let it be. Oh, Let's go back to oh, let it be. You mean the Beatles? Oh. Yeah. When you first heard "Let It Be," mm-hmm. Anne. Um, let the universe take its course. Okay. I always, th- I, I, you know, that's what I always thought it was. And as it turns out, anybody else think something else? That's what I was thinking too. Just, uh, um, it's going to happen. It's going to take place. Let it, let it happen. Yeah, I'm agreeing. Yeah. And, and, you know, it, and, and, and Claudia, Yes, what is the next line of let it be so that uh, I have a better understanding? Well, it starts out when I find myself in times of trouble. Mother Mary comes to me speaking words of wisdom. Let it be. Okay. I wake up to the sound of music. I don't remember all of it. There will be an answer. Let it be. And so indeed, Paul McCartney always heard it as chill. Don't worry about it. Things will be okay. Leave it alone. Naomi Shemel never heard it that way. She always heard it as may it happen. And that's why the he the when Israel Radio called it she And and there's a song. Uh, whatever will be, will be. It's like, don't worry about it. Uh, you know, don't uh, there's no need to worry. Yebisedel, the quintessential Israeli answer to all all problems. Wait long enough, it'll be okay. And as I talked about a little bit uh, in our Kol Nashim rehearsal, the Yom Kippur War changed the way Israel thought about itself. It shook uh, it shook the, the 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 basic roots of how the country perceived itself. And I actually read somewhere a, a quote, which is wonderful, uh, which was the Yom Kippur War and Lu Yehi was the day the accordion died in Israel. Because all of those wonderful old songs that were often played, and it wasn't the accordion actually practically the instrument, the accordion, but those songs, those old songs, the kibbutz songs and the military songs that we are all one, and peace will come, and we're at war because we have no choice. But eventually, the the you know peace will come. It'll be it literally it 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 will be all right because he has to. It has to. And after the six day war, that much more because haven't we proven that we're basically indefensible? Uh, sorry, uh, unbeatable. So why would anybody want to go to war with us? Right there, there, it's not, it's illogical. So I'm going to go back to the text. Okay, so the first, uh, the first verse is about the white sail on the horizon. So even though, even when things are darkest, and uh, and it occurred to me now, in the evening windows, the holiday candlelight is is shaking or fluttering. Uh, I have never seen such darkness as I saw during the blackouts of Yom Kippur. So if you can imagine uh, if, if somebody lights candles for Chag, and remember this is where we're going into Sukkot, um, you're going to see it through the windows if they leave the window windows open. Okay, second line. Im ham vaser omed badelet, ten mila tova befiv. If the herald stands at the door, or the messenger, depending on what translation you're using, put good news in his mouth. 
אם, נפש, אם, אם נפשך למות שואלת מי פריחה ומי אסיף, if your soul asks to die, and not clear to me, so it could be פריחה is flowering, and אסיף is harvest, but לפרוח is also to float away. And Asif is also collecting or harvesting in the way if we think of the angel of death harvesting souls. So very, very uh, dark verse. Ma kol anot ani shomea, kol shofar ve kol tupim. What a voice of re re answer or reply I hear, the sound of a trumpet and the sound of the drums. Of course, we translate shofar as shofar, not necessarily trumpet. May my voice be heard among all of these noises. And now something completely different, and I think this verse is left out because it's just not as deep emotionally, it doesn't ring as an emotional bell. In a small shady neighborhood, a small house with a red roof, זה סוף הקיץ, סוף הדרך, תן להם לשוב הלום. This is the most direct reference to the war. It's the end of the summer. Remember, the war started Yom Kippur. The song came out Erev Sukkot. It's the end of the summer, the end of the road. Let them come back here, whatever, uh, from where, so this is the soldiers who have all gone, and they were gone during the, the two, three weeks of the war. There were no men. to be seen unless they were uh, significantly older. ואם פתאום יזרח מאופל על ראשנו אור כוכב, and if suddenly a light shines from the darkness over our heads, the light of a star, אז תן שלווה ותן גם כוח לכל אלה שנאהב. So give peace and strength to all those who we love. כל שנבקש לו יהי. So I'm going to stop sharing so you can't see my notes, so I can ask you some questions and you don't see the answers uh, that I wrote. So I'm talking, so what about, what kind of associations, and, and we know that Israeli songwriters live in the world of the sources. They live with the Tanakh, they live with the prayer book, Um, I, I've told before that I learned lots of songs growing up and didn't know until I came to the United States and started going to services that they were all from the prayer book or quotes from, you know, I, I didn't know. So what kind of references can you find or, or did struck you that would be something related to sources, to prayer? Anne? Well, she talks about the uh, the light of the holiday candles, um, the cry of the shofar, and my prayer. So, right, right. So, so she says, I mean, tfilami pi, right? Um, and I think not just the shofar, but the drums, right? If you think of, of Psalm uh, 150, right? right? You have right. both the shofar and the drums are, are, are listed there. So um, I'm going to share my document with you again because I wrote all kinds of neat notes here. And so the, 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 the re repeated refrain, right? How many, how many poems do we have we, where we say, can you hear atzon, right? Or mm -hmm. other, other things that- The, the, that priestly, re the priestly blessing. Priestly blessing, right? We 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 repeat those things. Uh, we'll look at the rhyme thing, rhymes rhymes in a minute. But references, so the the Psalms. Now the the what the she says, makol anot ani shomea. Kol anot is from Shmot, the story of the golden calf, and Moses says that that he you don't hear you know what are we hearing? You don't hear the the sound of prayer. You don't hear the sound of regret. Makol anot. And what about the messenger? Is this an actual reference to Eliyahu, to Mashiach? Or is this the messenger at the door? 
And you also met, you already mentioned uh, tefillah and, and she, she basically prays ten shalva, ten koach. And so here's a quote from Naomi's daughter, also from the National Archives. Um, the, the verse, and let me get that, that verse for you. Okay. If the messenger stands at the door, put good news in his mouth, whatever we ask, may it be. If your soul requests to die to after flowering and after harvest or to float away and be collected, whatever we ask, may it be. And her, her daughter, whose name is not mentioned and I didn't find, said, I never talked to my mother about the change, about that verse being dropped. But as you know, you in particular know, she made changes in her poems freely, sometimes in the last proofreading of the books, because she released book, books of poetry. And so her poems changed all the time, which makes me feel a lot better of picking and choosing which verses we're going to sing. From my acquaintance with her, and with the required caution, in my opinion, the stand -up stanza breaks the delicate balance between sadness and hope in the poem. It's all grief and death wish. And she, the, oh, this is Google Translate. So uh, they, Google Translated Massif is massive and I didn't catch it till now, but yeah, yeah. While without it, the balance, be, so it's from blooming until harvest, right? It's everything is dying. And without it, the balance between the white sail and the darkness, the light and, and the, the, the heaviness is maintained. In addition, paying attention to the contemporary language of her time, as well as the rich layers of language that she mastered, because remember, she started working on this before the war started. She noticed excuse me, a change in the meaning of the word messenger. In the reality of our lives, which was different from the traditional biblical one, which I loved finding this because it was, ha, I was right, it was a biblical reference. Today in Israel, in the time of the seven, seven, Yom Kippur War, the messengers mean the delegation of the ministry of defense and the news in their mouths is never good, okay? And so you can imagine in, in, in sensitivity to all of those families who had a messenger knock at the door and you knew, uh, and I, there, was a, there was a program about uh, the children of the Air Force during the 73 war. And uh, they interviewed these children who are, who are of course are now, uh, now grown up and they would see the cars pull up and you know they lived on the on the air force base so the the homes of the of families are are all in rows and everybody could see the cars coming down towards the rows and one boy said and he would watch the car and every time it didn't come to his house he was happy and then of course he felt guilty because he knew that one of his friends um so i'm going to give you this link uh in the chat if I can find where the heck, there it is. Okay, there's the chat. Um, I'm gonna give you this link in the chat if you are interested. Uh, it's a, uh, you can just copy it and hold on to it. Uh, there's a very nice uh, in-depth analysis of the text. Uh, it is in Hebrew, but Google Translate does not do a bad job. I, ch I checked it in Google Translate and it really does a pretty good job. Uh, but except except for the translation of the poem, which is absolutely dreadful. So let's look at this again and think about mention of senses, the things that appeal to our different senses. So take a moment to look it over. And have a think. So if we look for sight, what are some of the things that pop out to you that have to do with sight? The white sail. Yeah. The black cloud. Right. The flickering of the candle. Flickering candles. Um, and suddenly rising the light of the star that shines. And I also saw the Shady red roof. The red roof, which I suspect the red roof was part of that. Okay, so, and then. Is there a red roof on our copy or just on your copy? 
Uh, I, you don't have, the, I, I don't remember, I don't, I didn't put that verse, I only put in the verses of the three verses that we're singing, and we're not singing the messenger, and we're not singing the red roof, okay. so it's on here, but I suspect that part of putting in that additional color was, oh, I mentioned uh, these colors, and, and so I should put in another color, okay, uh, how about hearing? Trumpet. The trumpet. The voice, the voice of answer. The voice, oh, the drums, drums we said, drums, one so. prayer from my mouth, right? And I'm going to go back to my notes here so I don't, so vision, right? The light and dark, the colors, right? Shadow, darkness, hearing we have kol, right? And, and make sure that you differentiate kol with a kaf means all and kol with a kuf means voice. Okay, so if you're not if you're not reading Hebrew, be careful about that. And then speech, right? Tfilami pi and shoelet. There's really nothing uh, about touch. All right, so let's start taking a look at her a, a little bit about the the technique of doing this poem. And we're going to go down here first. And um, this is uh, the reason I'm showing you on PDF and not Word, because Word has like everything underlined in red. All the Hebrew underlined in red is not being words. So her rhyme scheme, and I'll say right and right out front uh, in Hebrew, we say tzatzolea, which means it limps a little. Her rhymes are not perfect rhymes. And, and you don't have to scrabble to, to copy things. I'm happy to send you the, the document if you want it. Okay, so first, A, B, we repeat the line, A, B. And it repeats, it repeats, it repeats, it repeats, it repeats, it repeats. Uh, so they're not, they're not perfect rhymes. Lavan ba'ofek, chalonot ha'erev, you know, you get the E eh at the end. Kaved ro'ed, yeah, that, that, that is, that is a, a good rhyme. Badelet, shoelet, close, you know? I mean, at least you have the, the, the let at the end, okay? Shomea, kolele. Yeah, looking at the air. Mutzelet, haderech, well, eh, eh, but, you know, and then this this is the, the, the doesn't rhyme at all. Meofel vekoach, no. Her bees are a little better. Kaved, roed, yeah. Tov befiv ume asif, close. Tupim mipi, not so much. Adom halom, you have the vowel sounds and the ending consonant, and o kochav shenohav. So she does. Yes, Anne. Don't forget to unmute. Um, I, I just wanted to comment that it doesn't mean it's just because they don't rhyme perfectly doesn't take away from the strength of the poem. So Agreed. It's, Agreed. Just, it's just a comment on how she wrote it. It's not good or bad. Correct. Agree with you, Anne. Correct. Correct. But uh, they're not. But, you know, we, it, we without making a judgment call, it's hard to, to use the word perfect and imperfect without it having a judgment, but they're not great rhymes. They're not all great rhymes. And so she uses other things to unify. And I pulled out some of the things that uh, caught my ear and caught my eye. So odd and or and nerot. And I have a, a, a whole thing with the vowel sounds up here. Um, but she does have repeating vowel sounds that start unifying, that unify the the uh, the verses better. Okay, as we said, lavan shachor are those colors. Im, um, this im is if. Okay, so kol shenevakesh lu yehi, the im if something happened, and im hamvaser that that should that e should be gone. Im nafshecha. And then ma, what? And then with that im, I, I was struck, oh, v'im pitom. 
All right, so there's all these and if, and if, and if, and if, and this reinforces the uncertainty of, of this being, this situation of being at war. Um, what else? Why else? Why I'm trying to remember. Oh, and then these kol, kol, kol. So this, this is the, uh, the or, the light, and the kol, and then uh, tishama. Not sure why I, I don't remember why I highlighted this, those. So let's look at this bit here. And I'm going to make a little bit of a space. Nah, I can't do that. It's, there's a reason the spaces are why they are, because it, it, well, it won't let me move things around. All right. So if you look at this verse here, okay, this, and I'm going to, un, un, so you can see it, it really struck me. Look how many ah, 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 oh, 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 eh, eh, eh. Od yesh mifras lavan ba'ofek mul anan shachor kaved. There's so many ah, ah, oh, ah, ah, oh. Ve'im pachalonot ha'erev or nerot ha'chag ro'ed. So you do have those ez at the end, but in between, right? Because ofek, kaved, erev, ro'ed, but there's a lot of ahs, a pre pre predominance of ahs. There's only these two e's. And if you notice, and I don't know if this has to do with how it sounded, because we know that poets, how do they pick a word? You know, it's very, it's very complex how they pick a word. I'm trying to remember the poet, uh, which poet, I, th I think it might have been Joanna Chen, who says that she uses uh, uh, she uses a thesaurus and starts writing out lists and lists and lists of words that are are connected to the idea that she wants to convey, and then starts picking out the words that she feels go together. So in gray, I have the e's, and notice how often the e is connected with an with an m either before or after me, im. Im, me, im, me, me. Oh, I missed one. Uh, no, that's a oh, um, uh, im. So I have to, I have to think that there's something about that sound that she wanted to have, uh, in with within the poem itself. Uh, if we go to the second verse, that im ham vaser omed badelet. If you look at how many fewer, I did it in the in the, the pinkish purple because it really pops out. So look at all the O's here. And O is the sound is kol. And if we look at kol she nevakesh lu yehi, O, E, 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 one A, one U. I know is one O, but that kol, which is with the kaf, all that we ask for, unlike this, Call the kol shofar, which is a kuf, okay? So o e e a e u e i, right? U e i, it's it's a sound combination that we don't hear anywhere else. That lu yehi u e i, it doesn't happen anywhere else in the song, okay? And you can see by the colors, green, yellow, gray. It's just in the chorus. It's the only place that it happens. Whether she did this on purpose or not. You know, anybody who analyzes a piece of artwork, it's kind of a toss up. Did the artist intend it? Did they not intend it? If you see it and they didn't intend it, does it not count? Uh, personally, I think I think all the things count, both both what the artist intended and what we see into it. So this uh, with the Herald has a lot of that. Im, me, e, im, e, e. OK. Um, it's a hard verse, and I don't think it's a great verse. And I think she intended it to be optimistic, although why, why, if you want to die, I'm not sure why that, I, I'm not, it's very unclear. And I think it was a wise decision. And, and Naomi Shemer herself removed that verse out of respect for the families who lost people. The only one who sings that verse, who sang, continued to sing that verse was Chava Alberstein in her, in her uh, version. And here is our voices. Makol anot ani shomea kol shofar ve kol tupim. So again, we have a lot of oh. 
And I think that's another reason why it goes so well when we put it together with the first verse, when we leave out that second verse, we continue that chain of oh, 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 and more ahs. Okay, ma kol anot ani shomea, kol shofar ve kol tupim, luti shama betoch kol ele, gam tfila achat mi pi. So again, the rhyme here bothers me a little bit, but the, but the line is so beautiful. And because she breaks it up with the refrain, you don't hear it as much. You, you know, you, you don't notice it as much. Okay, this fourth verse is also often left out. And it's left out because it doesn't have that white and dark. White and dark. I hear, is there a voice? Am I heard? Is there a light? Is there dark? In a small shady neighborhood, a small house with a red roof. It's hard to take this metaphorically. It's hard to take it in any way other than very practically. <laughs> so there's a house and somebody inside is waiting for somebody to come home. And that is uh, one of the verses that are that are stuck at, at, at uh, you know, that are, I believe, tacked on on the side on her manuscript. And finally, the im pitom yizrach. Yizrach is rise up when we talk about the sun, zorachat. When we talk about the moon, all the constellations, zorchim, they come up in the east. The impitom yizrach meofel, al roshenu or kochav. Again, there's, there's fewer purples than there are here. There's more of the ez. But again, we have the o, e, a, barely any oos, barely any eems, and it connects orally, A-U-R-A-L, with the first and second verse. And I think that that it just feels very uh, satisfying to do it uh, that way. So I think that is going to check and make sure that I didn't miss anything that I wanted to share with you. Oh, okay. So after the song was played on Israel television broadcast, um, Shemer was flooded with um, letters. And I'm going to give you this link in the chat. If you want to go there, again, you'll, you'll have to copy and paste and put it into Google Translate. It is only available in Hebrew. But there are uh, reams of letters, and they included about a dozen of them, quoted about a dozen of them uh, in the piece. Uh, it, I, I, was, I just read, um, oh, I think it's Who by, Whom by Fire, which is the book about Leonard Cohen and the Sinai. Uh, honestly, the Leonard Cohen stuff didn't interest me too much. Uh, his writing is, is, is a little bizarre. Um, I'm going to unshare here. Uh, but he talks about the, the the stuff about the seventy three war was was fascinating, very difficult. There were many many things that uh, living in 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 the cities we didn't we didn't know. There was were catastrophic losses from Israeli fire against Israelis. Um, there were there were um, horrible things when when I went into the army. I had to learn this whole system of paperwork because people swarmed into the country and they wouldn't wait to be posted. And so many people just hitchhiked their way down to the front and joined their units. They went, they took their unit, their uniforms, they joined their units. Uh, tanks were, were uh, blown up and you had remnants from three different tanks you know, you had a survivor from here and a survivor from there and two survivors from there. And they all joined together and they said, which tank is working? And they went and did that tank. And so the, it took weeks besides the technology that we that we have now that we didn't have then to, you know, for, for people to call home. Nobody knew where people were. Nobody knew who was alive, who was dead, who was missing. Uh, there's a story uh, in the book about uh, uh, a, a group that is on a ship. They, they, they're planning a, 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 a mission that ends up not happening. One of the sailors on the mission, brother, was dead. His body was actually on shore 
And they didn't tell him that his brother was dead until the mission was canceled because they didn't want to endanger the mission by him knowing. Uh, devastating, horrific stories. And so he includes the story uh, of uh, Dado Elazar, David Elazar, who was the, the Ramatkal, who was the, the chief of the military forces at the time. Uh, he was ultimately uh, the scapegoat because really it was a failure of intelligence. It was a failure of the government. Uh, there, was, there was information that was brought that was disregarded. Uh, and uh, but but as chief of staff, he was he was the scapegoat. He ended up having to retire. It was it was very shocking uh, because he was in our living rooms every night. You know, he gave reports, and he was in our living rooms every night. For me, as somebody who made Aliyah in 1970, he was my first chief of staff. Uh, you know, for most Israelis, you talk about the chief of staff like you know him. You know, you don't talk about General Elazar. It's Dado. Dado's speaking tonight. Shh, be quiet. Dado's got something to say. Uh, he died. Actually, he was exercising and jumped into a cold pool and had a massive heart attack uh, a few months after the war. But in the Leonard Cohen book, they relay that he heard uh, Louis He on the radio and went into his office and put his head down on the desk on his desk and cried. And there were bereaved families who wrote her that suddenly they feel less alone, they feel seen, uh, they feel heard. The, the messages uh, are unbelievable. And, um, and there's a reason that this song has, has, has stayed as perennial as it has. Um, I'm going to want to give you a chance if there's anything you would like to add at this point to our conversation. Anne, I had faith. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about the fragility of the hope. So yeah. there's a, a white sail on the horizon opposite a heavy black cloud. So you see this heavy, massive cloud and a little white sail. And then you, in the evening, the light of the holiday candle flickers. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, come, coming and going. And it's, um, and it's a very small light. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, and uh, within all this, one prayer from my lips. So it's as if there's, you know, the whole universe and there's one prayer. Um, and the same with the stars in the darkness, the light of one star. So there's, there's a fragility there. To the, it's, it's there, it's tangible. But it feels like you've got to grab it. But it's yeah. still there. But it's still there. But it's again, still there. And all this darkness, you still have that little bit of light. You still have that hope. And I think also you have to work to see the light. That's you know? why you need the strength and the tranquility in order to be able to catch the light or 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 maybe see it. Yeah. Yeah. It's and it's it's. It was in Israel at the time very, very, very hard. Um, there was a mythology, and and many of the myths continue to be broken, as as Israel deals with uh, equality of minorities and representation, and uh, Ashkenazi privilege and all of that, uh, all of uh, that that stuff. But um, there there was a mythology that we are a light unto the nations that Israel is not like other nations, that our politicians are not corrupt, as ridiculous as it seems to have thought that thought. But I mean, but we did, you know, uh, you know, there were things that were going around on behind the scenes. Um, and, and there was backstabbing and there was this and there was that. If you want to read uh, Abba Evans' uh, autobiography, and how he was constantly passed over, very capable person. Uh, he was in Israel for decades and decades, and he was in the government, and he was always that South African. You know, he was always that South African. My mother says, or used to say, you know, after, after 40 years living in Israel, I'm still Ruthie American for the Israelis. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Claudia, go ahead. Yes. Um, so the myth about the light of the nation, the light, what is it called? The, the light, light unto the, the nations. Oh, la goyim. 
Yeah, so when you come from the Holocaust and you're vermin, then yes, you have Israel and you become the light. It's the polar opposite. So it yeah. makes sense. Yeah, but I, I mean, it, but it, in, you know, in many, also for the kibbutzim, you know, there, there was this generation uh, that came to Israel in the 20s, in the 30s, uh, actually even in the 1890s, the, the, and they came for idealistic reasons. And uh, part of the reason they didn't understand the demands or the, the complaints of the Aliyah that came from the Mediterranean and the Arab countries was these were people who were doctors, who were lawyers, who were professors, who came to plow. And, and, and you know, if, if you've ever uh, created a new patch in your garden, you know that the, the stones somehow grow, right? You go and you pull out all the stones, you leave it a day or two, you come back, there's more stones. And so this is what they were doing. These highly educated professors who had never done physical labor a day in their life, they were coming. We came to the country to build and be built by it. And it was a very, this, this idealism very much uh, permeated uh, the way day-to-day the -day living. And so to have a situation, and, and actually there was a quote from somebody in, in the book who said, well, you know, God was looking out for us because thank goodness that they attacked on Yom Kippur when the roads were empty and when we called people up, they could get there right away because there was no traffic. Mm -hmm. Imagine how much longer it would have taken to get the troops to the front if it had been if it had been a work day so you know i would like to uh to finish up unless somebody else has something else to uh to add barb yeah the the verse with the little house and the red roof i i don't remember ever having seen that before but there's something so normal about it and when you talk about that little bit of hope you know there's a little house in a shady lane and the summer is ending and they're going to come back. You know? Yeah. I, I, it, 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 you have some of that in Ahadvash um, Ve'alhelkets as well. You know, that same kind of feeling that, you know, what are we waiting for? What do we want? We want normalcy. Yeah. And that's normal. Uh, I'm, but I'm thinking, as you're saying this, I'm thinking that possibly one of the reasons that this verse, verse uh, went away is because there were so many that didn't come back. Could be as well. You know, there, there. I mean, I, I think I shared in rehearsal. So I was 15 during the war, and people who were three years older than me, when I met them later in in college, there were no men. There were, you know, you you you'd have four, uh, four, three or four out of five men in that grade in or in that Fathers, in that, that that died. You know, that, we that, were there. I was there right after the Six Day War, and it was very got, different. And I got yes, but I got there at the time of the Shloshim, and it was it was pretty hard. It was it was a, it was a mix, you know, absolute astonishment. Oh my God, look what we have now, and you know, people died. Yeah, this one we were there in '74 in the summer, so it was you know less than a year later, and people were still sort of walking around like. Well, because you have to what remember that to us? What happened in, to us? in 67, you still had Tov Lamut It's good to die for our country. And Nathan Hale, if I have one life to give, let me give it, country, yeah. give it to my country. And after 73, it was felt that no, the the price the price was too high. The, or not even that the price was too high, but that we put faith in our leadership to be as competent as possible to ensure that the losses would be only what was necessary. And Israel was caught with their pants around their ankles and many died uh, before things could be, could be gotten back together. You know, it, it was, it was, and I, you know, uh, as I mentioned, my husband was, was a POW at this time. Uh, his group was very, very well known. There were a group of 10 who were in Egypt in uh, Abbasia prison. And um, they're, they're most uh, famous for having uh, 
translated uh, The Hobbit into Hebrew. Un it's the unauthorized, it's called the pilot's translation, which uh, is, is better, I think, than, uh, than the official translation. Uh, but my husband uh, became very, very close friends with uh, someone uh, who was, you know, his brother from another mother. And her, his, her, his wife's brother, Amir, who was a pilot, we have people coming in at almost eight, so I'm not sure why. Uh, hi, welcome. Those of you who are just coming in, we're just about wrapping up. And Michelle, I'll comment on your comment in a second. Um, and so uh, Jeff's uh, friend's wife, Nurit, her brother was shot down during the war. And her husband came home as a result of the exchange of prisoners after the war. And so talk about Hadvashva Okits. And so, you know, and they were, th they were, they were in uh, Abbasia for three and a half years. So her husband came back literally within days of learning that her brother died. And she, she told me, I, I mean, her, her husband died three years ago. She is finally in the past year uh, been able to grieve her brother's death. Hmm. So it's, it's, it's a complicated place. Uh, Michelle, I, I love your, your thought and I have, I have no idea, but it's, it's, a, it's a good thought. I, I don't think she had anybody. She was, her children were, were very young. She didn't have anybody, uh, family in, but we all knew people who died or I didn't personally. So what I'd like to do to finish up is I have a, a recording of Lu Yehi sung by Chava Alberstein. And uh, it, this one does have the words underneath in English. And it is on a background of videos from the Yom Kippur War. Um, while I set up the share, I uh, urge you to get a hanky <laughs> because I can't watch it without crying. So, uh, all right, and I'm not I'm not going to put it on full page. So, uh, well, uh, you know, you, you're not going to see all of the all of the text. It is what it is. Here we go. I'll I'll put it on full screen.
All right. So uh, that's all I have. If you have anything else, uh, you uh, thank you, Joyce. I'm looking back. So Naomi Shemer's daughter is Lali, which is probably short for something. <laughs> uh let's see uh and, and i did a google search and i yeah. found i found actually her um her obituary in haaretz and actually, oh my goodness so that was where i um came up with that and also in wikipedia naomi's naomi's uh obituary not lali's naomi's yeah yeah what a loss, what a loss for us all. And 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 Leon, I think uh, Anne addressed your comment that imperfect rhymes may add to the strength. Uh, and I, I kind of like free, free poetry myself, uh, but obviously she wanted, she wanted things to be, to be rhyming-ish. So those of you who entered just before eight o'clock, I'm sorry if there was some, uh, Confusion. I thought I, the, the reminder that I sent earlier said 7 p.m. Mountain Time. I did that on purpose. So um, thank you all for coming. There is no text in context next month. Ah, this is what you look like, Leon. Um, um, <laughs> we are alternating for Sundays. So uh, in November, Mimi Raisin will continue her uh, Jewish Broadway series. And this year she's doing uh, Jewish Leading Ladies. She will be starting with Sophie Tucker. Don't worry, you'll get plenty of uh, mailings about that. Uh, the Colorado Mailing? Hebrew Corral. Yes, Barb. Is it going to be seven or 730 for her? Seven. Everything's seven. at seven. Oh, everything will be seven. And Everything. Seven, seven, First seven, Sundays at seven. Uh, and I to Mimi determines how long Mimi speaks and, and how much uh, she has to say. We we schedule it for an hour and a half, figuring that better people expect that it'd be longer and it'd and it be shorter than people at 45 minutes go, no, aren't you done yet? Um, the Colorado Hebrew Corral is thankful to receive funding from Scientific Cultural Facilities <laughs> District. And this year we also received a grant from Colorado Creative Industries. Uh, we, with great joy, present these programs at no cost. If you are able to go to the Colorado Hebrew Corral website and make a donation of any size to help us continue giving these free programs, and I know most of you already give us money and thank you, and more is always good. Um, oh my goodness. So we have somebody who just got added now. Um, and I'm so sorry, Neats. But uh, yeah, we're we're just finishing up. Oh, she's not connected yet. Yes, yeah, she is. Oh, there we go. Um, we're we're just finishing up, but it is uh, recorded. It is on our Facebook page because this was on uh, Facebook Live, and it will be on our YouTube channel. So, wishing everybody gemar chatima tova, have an easy fast, mm -hmm. and uh, may the year that is upon us be full of joy and health and no war. Amen. Amen. Laila tov everybody. Bye-bye.